Today's a good day. A day America takes a vital step toward equality, toward liberty and justice, not just for some, but for everyone. Today, I signed the Respect for Marriage Act into law. I'm smiling because the president made it official today. And tonight, same-sex and interracial marriage protections are officially law. The federal government must now recognize marriages and guarantee full benefits regardless of sex, race, ethnicity, or national origin. Back with us tonight to discuss Michael Steele, former chairman of the Republican National Committee and former lieutenant governor of Maryland. And my friend Tim Miller, contributor to The Bulwark and the former communications director for Jeb Bush. He wrote the new book, Why We Did It. Tim, this wasn't just a huge day for the White House. It was a huge day for our country. Talk to us about how important this law is, not just for the president, but for our future. Well, look, it, uh, most importantly, uh, it provides real protection uh, for families like mine by repealing uh, DOMA. You know, if it is uh, such a case that Obergefell ever gets overturned, uh, if my family decided we wanted to move to a state, a red state maybe, that decided that they wanted to overturn gay marriage, I think that's a pretty outside possibility at this point, but you really never know, as we've learned in 2020 and 2016. Uh, it's better to be safe. It's better to protect against these sorts of things. And so at the most narrow level, all existing gay marriages are now protected under federal law, and that's a wonderful thing. Uh, but to me, the thing that really struck me the most today is just the pride of this, to have this signing ceremony at the White House with thousands of people in attendance, with an openly gay Secretary of Transportation there, uh, with just beaming pride from this president, well-deserved, having even votes from some but not enough Republicans. Uh, like, what a moment and just what a stark contrast to, you know, how would the bill that, that this is repealing, how it was signed. I don't know if your viewers know this, but in 1996, when Bill Clinton signed DOMA, zero Republicans tried to object to that. There were only 14 Democratic senators that tried to object to it. Bill Clinton was so ashamed about it that he didn't hold a bill signing ceremony like this, even though it was a bipartisan bill. He signed it at 12.50 a.m. in private at night uh, because uh, he knew at some level that, that he was causing harm to gay families out there, that there was a shame associated with this. And so to think that in 26 years we went from that kind of like furtive, hidden, gross bill signing, taking rights away, to this prideful celebration on the White House lawn, uh, it's really just unbelievable, an unbelievable moment. And how did Fox News characterize today's celebration? Sean Hannity said it was a waste of a day for the president. He should have spent it at the border. Now, Sean Hannity and Fox News said nothing when President Trump played golf about 260 times during his presidency, which would come out on average every five to six days. Michael, 50 Republicans did vote for this, but most voted against it, and the critics were very vocal. Do you think a move like that's going to hurt the GOP or it's what their base wants? It's what their base uh, wants primarily. And, and, and the Republicans that voted for it, um, you know, they, they're on the right side of history. Look, I, I'm not going to waste time fretting over the, the other numb nuts who didn't vote for it. Um, you know, let's let's take take the gift of those who actually have common sense know it's the right thing to do. This has nothing to do with religious ceremonies and everyone else get all caught up in religion. This is state action. This is state approval. This is state sanctioning. It's highly appropriate. It went through the legislative process, et cetera. Uh, and it garnered the support um, necessary to make it law. Uh, and I think people need to uh, look at it from that perspective and, and not waste time worrying about what Republicans are going to do because Republicans are going to do what they always do. Say no. Um, in larger numbers uh, than, than most others. And that's okay. The voters will get a chance to decide how important that no vote is to them in uh, 18 months uh, in the next cycle. But right now, I celebrate with my friend Tim and his family. I'm excited for him, uh, what this means for him and his family. But even more so, not just him and his husband, but for their children, what it means for their children, the kind of country that, uh, you know, Tim and, and uh, many, many supporters of his uh, around the country have had in creating this future. 
And to think it all started with a former vice president saying, you know what? I think we should do gay marriage, Mr. Obama. <laughs> and here we are. <laughs> Well, Mitch McConnell is worried about a party, but not a party at the White House. He's expressing again today concerns about his own party and their candidate quality issues. We've heard him say it before, Tim, but is he going to do anything about it or will the rest of his party? Maybe. I, I, I hope so. It should be a wake-up call that they should do it. They used to do it. Mitch McConnell used to try to have a little... He, he, his reputation of being a strong-handed leader within the party is, uh, is a little outdated uh, because back in 2014, that's what he did. You know, when there were candidates that went out there that had crazy views. I, I remember thinking about a Mississippi primary. There was a racist white nationalist radio host. Chris McDaniels, his name, was running against Thad Cochran. And, and McDaniel probably would have won if it wasn't for the fact that Mitch McConnell said, no, we're going to put in money an effort to ostracize this person, uh, to say that this is not who we are as a party, uh, to try to get people from the other side to vote in this primary, and it worked. That Cochran won that race, and 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 yet this time they didn't. They sat on the sidelines because he's scared of Trump, and and so he allowed all these crazies to win. It wasn't as if Mitch tried very hard to get good candidates in to change the candidate quality. He sat on the sidelines and let the voters, you know, who wanted the craziest sob in the race and Donald Trump to choose Herschel Walker and Dr. Oz and all these other lunatics. And so will he actually fight next time? Maybe. And that might actually help the party. But I'll believe it when I see it. So right now, it sort of seems like he just wants to point a bony finger down at Mar-a-Lago and not take any responsibility for himself. Well, Mitch McConnell knew they were lunatics. And now he has to live with the reality that they are losers. Michael Steele, Tim Miller, thank you both for joining us on this really important night. Coming up.